Fallout 3 was the best Bethesda would ever do. For on that fateful day, when fire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Vault 101 slid closed and never reopened. It was here you were born. It is here you will die. When you see reviews for Fallout 3 online, they tend to come in two flavors. They either are made by a questionable individual who wants to martyr themselves against what they perceive to be unjust attacks upon their preferred Bethesda game, usually out of nostalgia, or they are made by a rational person critiquing the great many flaws of Fallout 3 to the point of largely condemning it. Our opinion is somewhere between these extremes mostly due to the fact that we played the game with a great many mods that addressed a lot of the shortcomings and bugs of Fallout 3. This was most notably done with the dubious Tale of Two Wastelands mod that we jury-rigged into our game, which allowed a lot of the mechanics to simply be that of Fallout New Vegas instead, making a massive improvement to the game. We still want to review Fallout 3 on its own terms, but our focus is going to be the more RPG elements of the game, particularly the story, character, settings, and themes. Question 10. Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. Ugh. So let's break them down one at a time. Fallout 3's story is dull. The main quest is completely linear, with only the occasional choice for flavor. The player is born in the vault, has to chase after their father, helps the Brotherhood of Steel, and defeats the Enclave. The only optional components are to skip content to do the quest faster, or to poison the water supply for the Enclave, who you still have to fight. Whether it be your father James or Sentinel Sarah Lyons, the player spends the entire game following around the actual main characters, making the player feel like an NPC in the main quest. You want to find your dad, and it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. He was here at Galaxy News. We had a great conversation. He's a real stand-up guy. If you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight. The intro sequence in Vault 101 exemplifies this problem. While the idea of starting in a microcosm before being let out into the open world wasteland is certainly an interesting idea, Vault 101 loses its luster immediately when you play it more than once and realize exactly how linear and repetitive it is. Even the narrative within Vault 101 is dull. Supposedly, it is about fascism and how the Overseer is a tyrant, but the quests and NPCs consistently lead the player to forgive the Overseer and just bail on the vault, treating the Overseer's life as uniquely valuable and worth saving, when his life is pragmatically worth the least as the architect of so much mayhem and suffering. God, what have you done? You killed him! Why would you kill my father? After the vault sequence, the players relegated to chasing after their deadbeat father, who just straight up abandons their child to a fascist society. James is constantly lionized throughout the game for his selfless actions, despite his actions towards the player. You're just expected to forget what a bad father he was because he was also trying, though failing, to solve the water crisis. He even dies partway through the game, martyring him for his cause, cementing his goodness as the real main character that the player is just forced to witness. I grow tired of waiting. Nearly finished. Colonel Autumn? What? Ah! James! Run. Run. Fallout 3's characters are flat. People like James come off as confused because they have so much screen time, but other characters tend to say so little of any relevance that they don't really stand for anything. 
the majority of characters in Fallout 3 have only a singular character trait. Tammy? She's a bad mom. Machete? He's seen things. Birch? He's blinded by faith. Lions? He's trying to do better. Other characters, like Colonel Autumn, the main antagonist of the game, are supposed to represent the fascist enclave faction. But even literal fascists disavow him because his writing makes him look like a nonsensical fool with no real motivation whatsoever beyond control the water supply. I'll tell you what's going on here. You lost. The good guys won this one, and now we're just wrapping up loose ends. We've got the purifier, now we just need the code to start it. Meanwhile, Fallout 3 setting is completely unrealistic, and this affects its themes as well. Bethesda fundamentally misunderstands the Fallout IP, which depicted a world ravaged by humanity's mistakes, but continuously being shaped by them and evolving. Fallout 1, 2, and New Vegas each depict a western coast more and more changed by the things that happened there. Fallout 3 instead depicts the eastern coast, the capital wasteland, frozen in time, with the region maybe having five years of actual historical events in the last 200 years of time. It's dead, empty, completely hollow, but there are still people that live there somehow, infamously without any discernible food sources. Why don't you tell me about yourself? Oh, it's impolite for a gentleman to talk about himself, but I'd hope this magnificent tower would speak volumes. This is Bethesda's Fallout motto of War Never Changes to its logical extreme and that they believe in the post-apocalypse that nothing really changes. Fallout 3 would be the first time they did this, but literally every other Fallout game they make has the same problem. The societies of these wastelands literally don't make sense, as the people and communities are existing in the limbo, transitory state that you'd expect to see in the year or two after the war, not 200 years later. The economy is similarly nonsensical. Using caps, the currency that originally was only used by the hub on the other side of the continent, but is now retconned to have been seen as a good idea across America, whether it be the hub using caps to represent water bottles, or the desolate capital wasteland using caps despite a lack of drinkable water. I've been drinking this irradiated shit and I, I can't do it. I just throw it up now. I need purified water, please. Uh, all right, here, have this purified water. You mean, you, you don't want anything for it? I don't have any caps or anything. I can just have it. I can just have it for free. Fallout 3's cap economy makes no sense, as there is no cooperation between towns. And yet, post-war companies exist without any predation from the lack of regulations or oversight. Organization as a concept seems to be vestigial, and somehow all this exists concurrently with literal slavery. The insistence on financial gain for the player in this nonsense economy leads us to believe that this game, along with Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, suffer from capitalist realism. The idea, and essentially philosophy, that the world will end before capitalism does. Yes, that's literally how it is described. It's like Bethesda said, yes, that. It really kills player agency, as it feels like the player is fundamentally incapable of making society better, even when doing beneficial quests, with the Enclave threat only inspiring the player to make sure things don't actively get worse. Unfortunately, my superiors back west disagree with my assessment of the situation. They feel I've grown too attached to the local populace. And they're right. In any event, the Enclave's arrival changes everything. We would give the game credit for having a fair amount of diversity. Bethesda actually surpasses Obsidian in this regard if one were to rotely calculate the numbers, but you soon see that the diversity is entirely superficial, as no people of color are allowed to lead any faction with any amount of relevance unless the faction is bad. 
two slaver factions are led by black men, along with the so-called unelected sheriff of Megaton, one of the largest towns. Meanwhile, all the nice factions are led mostly by white people, like the Brotherhood, Rivet City, Riley's Rangers, and Oasis. However, thankfully we note that the Enclave is predominantly white, which makes sense for the evil band of eugenicists. Anyone or anything that has been affected by mutation will be eliminated. I understand that you may have become sympathetic to certain individuals in your travels. Individuals this will eliminate. Please recognize that the fate of our entire country rests on this plan. Sacrifices must be made for the greater good. But we do have some good things to say, as Fallout 3 does have some gems mired in the muck. There's a reason many people look nostalgically in Fallout 3, and we attribute this to a sort of positivity bias. They're remembering the best bits of the game, not remembering all the forgettable samey nonsense that just slides off the casual player's mind. It's not like any of the quests or challenges require extensive use of the mind, and so it makes sense that the recall of the experience might focus on the more spectacular moments that can be found in the side content outside of the main quest. The Oasis quest is the best example of this, as deciding whether to kill Harold is one of the few real moral decisions with nuance in the entire game. The best content in Fallout 3 are side quests that act as their own little stories in the wasteland, and so the game still manages to pull some heartstrings, despite the mind-numbing amount of garbage contained within it. Well, it's a dangerous place out there in the wastes, right? People could really use a compilation of good advice, like a wasteland survival guide. For that, I need an assistant to test my theories. I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt because of a mistake. And so we give Fallout 3 a... 5 out of 10. Ultimately a mixed bag.